One of the questions I've been repeatedly asked throughout my career is whether a nuclear reactor can explode like a nuclear bomb. Well, the short answer is no, it's physically impossible, but let's explore why. Hey everybody, I'm Jim, and if you're new here, I'm a nuclear engineer with more than 20 years experience operating, maintaining, and testing nuclear reactors and training engineers. So since nuclear reactors use the process of fission to create power, and they're mostly fueled by uranium, we're just going to talk about fission-style weapons like the ones that were created during the Manhattan Project. So what is fission? As you can see in this picture, fission occurs when a neutron is absorbed by a nucleus of an atom, in this case uranium-235, and that causes that atom to become unstable. The atom then splits, releasing fission products, a significant amount of energy, and most importantly, two to three neutrons. Now this is important because these neutrons can then go on to cause more fissions. In a nuclear reactor, this is a controlled process that results in a safe, stable reaction rate to produce consistent power output. However, in a nuclear weapon, the goal is that these neutrons start an uncontrolled chain reaction that can increase at an exponential rate, leading to... Now, in order to create a nuclear explosion, there has to be enough highly enriched uranium-235, or plutonium, in the right shape to achieve the required amount of fissions required before the core blows itself apart. And there are two main types of these fission atomic bombs. In a gun-type design shown here, a subcritical mass is propelled at another subcritical mass using a chemical explosion, similar to how a bullet is fired through a gun. In the picture, you can see the masses that are combined to form the supercritical mass required for the weapon to work. Now, this was the design of the little boy weapon of the Manhattan Project. This design is relatively simple, and they were so sure it was going to work that they didn't even bother testing it. And the second type of atomic bomb seen here is an implosion type design. In this design, a subcritical sphere of material is surrounded by high explosive charges designed to all explode at the same time, compressing the core into a critical mass. Now this is a far more complex design than the gun type design, and because of that complexity, it was decided that a test would be necessary. This was the famous Trinity test. So this was the Fat Man weapon that was ultimately dropped on Nagasaki and became the standard style of fission bomb that would continue to be refined in the following years. So how is a nuclear reactor different? The core geometry of a nuclear reactor is extremely different from that required for an atomic bomb. Instead of designing for an uncontrolled chain reaction that increases exponentially, a nuclear power reactor is designed for controllability. In a reactor, uranium fuel pellets are stacked in fuel rods that are placed in a very specific geometry to support a controllable fission reaction rate, as you can see in this cross-section of a fuel assembly. And in this picture, you can see another view of a fuel assembly in the lower right portion. The lower left picture is the top view of a reactor core, showing how all of the individual fuel assemblies are arranged. As you can see, there's a lot of material in the reactor core other than just nuclear fuel. Ultimately, a nuclear reactor is all about understanding and management of probabilities of reactions in the core. The fuel, the coolant water, and materials specifically designed to absorb neutrons like boron or reflect neutrons like steel or tungsten all result in a safe, balanced, controllable reactor. I mentioned before that an atomic bomb requires highly enriched material. I want to discuss that a little further. The most common isotope of uranium is U-238. In fact, 99.3% of uranium ore is U-238, and only 0.7% is U-235, which is the isotope that we need for fission to happen. The amount of U-235 that exists naturally is not enough to support fission, so it must be increased through an enrichment process. One method is the use of a centrifuge where uranium hexafluoride gas is fed into a spinning cylinder. Heavier isotopes move toward the outside of the cylinder, and that gas leaves with a slightly higher enrichment of U-235. This is repeated over and over again until the desired enrichment is achieved. Now, nuclear reactor fuel is normally enriched anywhere between 3 to 5 percent U-235. A nuclear bomb, however, requires a much higher enrichment. A bomb could be built with a material in the 20 percent range, but it would be impractically large. Most nuclear weapons are more in the 80 percent or plus range enrichment of U-235. But with the fuel in a nuclear reactor only being enriched to 3 to 5% U-235, that's far too low to support an atomic explosion. So it's just not physically possible for those reactors to undergo that time of explosion. Even if somebody took all of that uranium and tried to purpose build a nuclear bomb out of it, it just wouldn't work. It's not physically possible. In fact, an infinitely sized nuclear bomb would still require 5.4% enrichment in order to create a critical mass and an atomic explosion. So that means an atomic bomb the size of the universe still could not be created from the fuel that we use in a standard nuclear reactor. But there are some nuclear reactor designs that do use a higher enrichment of U-235. 
So what about those? So even if someone decided to build an entire reactor out of weapons-grade uranium, and if that whole core melted down into a puddle into the bottom of the vessel, it still would not be able to achieve the required geometry and create a sufficiently sized critical mass to create a nuclear explosion. A nuclear plant just cannot become an atomic bomb. 